Hello, I'm Ant from Soundsphere magazine, as well as Gimme a Whole Year Wrestling podcast. And today we are bringing you an interview with none other than Thunder Rosa. This was an audio interview that I've just conducted. And when I found out I was doing it, I was so excited. I'm a massive Thunder Rosa fan, as well as I think she's she's fantastic in the ring, but she's an inspiration outside of the ring. And I really wanted to sort of deep dive into that. And we had the opportunity to. Guys, just to bear in mind, this was filmed one week after Thunder Rosa had to relinquish her title due to injury. Thunder was actually traveling back from physical therapy as we was doing this interview. And during the during the interview, we get to talk about her physical therapy, how that's going, a time for self-reflection for Thunder Rosa, as well as being a pioneer in women's wrestling. I can't thank Thunder Rosa enough for giving us the opportunity to, and time to do this interview, but also to AEW, who made this interview possible. I hope you enjoy it. Please, if you do, like, subscribe. It really helps us out. Enjoy the interview, guys. Hello, Thunder. How are you doing? I'm good. I just came out of therapy. It's my second day of officially doing therapy for my injury. Um, okay. I feel better and I, I can tell you that i can feel better good we'll good. see later does it does it is it is it looking positive in the future or i mean it's gonna take a little while you know um definitely um i mean it's, it is positive because i know it's, you can you can heal so that's always a positive so um in every other aspect too it is a positive because i get a chance to really uh think about the future, you know, my present, and and um, and really reflect on the past and see what worked and what didn't work. Uh, yeah, sometimes it's sometimes it's good to have them moments where you just have to stop and reflect on both the future and the pa past. Absolutely, and and and, that, and that's what I'm most excited about because uh, I have this time now to really, really think and um and and rebuild, and that's the most that's the beauty of life. You know, you can, this can happen at any time. Absolutely. And you have been a person of reinvention constantly. Prior to being a wrestler, you was working as a social worker and connecting with young people. It, it really takes a certain type of person to do that. How was that experience? And uh, what is it that you take the, from that experience that you stays with you today? Um, you know, it, it, it just gave me a different perspective about the life that I live, the, the opportunities that I have the life uh, that I can create because a lot of these kids, they lived and they were born in a situation where they had no control, right? And, um, and they were victims of their, of, of their circumstances. And I know that I have, now I have choices and I can make the choice to be uh, whoever I wanna be. And, um, and, and, and for me, like jumping into a social worker to a wrestler and when I was leaving my my old job uh, receiving the letters that I received from the, the kids and some of the young people that I work with it was like how hopeful they were and how how much they knew that I was going to achieve what I told them that I was going to achieve because I did it for them in their life you know and, and in a very small scale and now as you know as a superstar in AEW and as a you know as a champion the women champion um I'm able to show that in, in paper and, and physically and and, uh, and and it is amazing because again I'm, I'm I'm reflecting on on everything that that has happened to me in the last couple of years and I can I can just tell you uh, regardless of the hardships and even even with the situation that I'm in right now with my injury I'm blessed well, it is inspiring, and it's inspiring that you was able to touch them on such a personal level as well, and now you're able to do it on a global level. But there's, there's something nice about that connection and being able to get appreciation for that connection as, uh, and the inspiration that you're giving to people as well. Yes, it is. I, I cannot tell you, like, the last... I've been disconnected from social media because I had to, like, really... When, when you get the news that you're not going to be able to do something that you're used to, that is your life, that... Um, you know, it, it gives you so much uncertainty, right? Mm -hmm. But if you're like just receiving some of the messages from some of the fans that have been following me from before I was a wrestler, when I was a valet, and telling me that I, I, that they believe in me, that they believe that I'm gonna come stronger, that um, that um, that I have inspired them to to work on themselves too. It's it's incredible. Like you know, I see myself as just like the girl from Tijuana that grew up in a small house, and you know. Uh, 
I, I see myself still as, as, as that girl, you know, and, and, and then when I see that on the grand scale of things and, and like knowing that people are like researching my name and, and they're like, holy crap, like she, this, this is who you are. And I was just like, yeah, this is who I am. It's, it's magical, dude. Like I cannot, I cannot tell you like this week, this weekend, I really thought about everything. I thought about the first time that I was, you know, moving into all out that is going to be this Sunday when I did my all out in front of anyone mm -hmm. and it was, you know, the biggest opportunity of my career at the moment. And, and like, and, and, and the whole process, like remembering being in Jacksonville, writing notes on my book and writing how I felt, um, like the doubts that were in my mind, like the, the fact that I had to call a couple people and, and, and just for them to remind me why was I there for, and, and what was the reason that, you know, God brought me to AEW. And, um, and, and like all the people that helped me along the way to get there. And, mm. and, you know, it's just, just like, it's really awesome that people can see that and, and, and they can feel, you know, motivated and, 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 and influenced by, by that. Well, I, th I think it takes a lot of guts to go from the security and probably the financial security as well of being a social worker to becoming a full-time wrestler. Can you tell me a little bit about that decision and the support network that you had around you at the time? Yeah, I was living in Oakland. Um, I I had two roommates that were helping me pay the rent. I rent my small little, uh, I, it was a dining room. I rented the dining room. In wow. the living room so it was my husband and i were living in one room and then i had one of my really good friends living in, in the other one and then some other guy from college living in our in a room and i remember sitting in the in in the kitchen and i was actually hurt at that moment and then my my husband said uh uh at the time uh i think it's time for you to like focus on wrestling i think you can make it i mean you are sacrificing too much you're not sleeping you're not you know you're not focusing on either one of the two at all and i think it is time for you i have a job i can you know pay for the insurance but at the time we had a really good job too we worked in the same company and right. and i jumped in and i that's what i did i was training four hours a day um between wrestling and you know weightlifting i changed my diet i got very serious about things and like there was moments in where there's a lot of uncertainty again because of the economic circumstances and at the time I wasn't making a lot of money but it was enough to to pay a rent to pay a car because I had a car payment too I just bought a car because I needed a reliable car to like be in, in in different cities to help my 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 clients so it was like doing all that and all the sacrifices that it took for me to to live up the dream of becoming a very successful professional wrestler so I became obsessed with success and um and and again it's just having that support people support group of people right behind you telling you that you can make it. It was, it was very, very important. I mean, um, just like every, I think everyone has gone through that when they really believe in that and when really believe in, in, in that they can do it, like you just sacrifice, you will sacrifice everything you have to sacrifice to, to get what you need again. Absolutely. And I, and I don't think people always realize they have a support network around them as well and how important that can be to make them decisions. Um, you was obviously as well around this time, considering being a referee, is that right? Yes, yes, I, um, I, when was it? It was 2000, 2019, I was in a very, like, it was a very dry spell, like, I was not getting any opportunities, nobody wanted to book me, um, we just moved into a new apartment in San Antonio, Texas, you know, my, I just adopted my son, like, a year before, there was a lot of changes, and I was just like, man, I need to get a job, I need right. to get a job, so I, I reach out to one of my friends, and he's like, well, they're looking for referees, and I'm like, well, you know, I need a job. So again, it was like that, that, that I was like, wow, like, am I going to do this for real? And I remember uh, I was about to do it. And then something magical happened. There was a hurricane and they canceled all my flights. And my husband really? was like, yeah, that was, they canceled the flight the day that I was supposed to go the next day, the next day, the next day. And mm -hmm. then I, I was, I was in the process of signing a contract for, to become an MMA fighter. And I was already training for it. I was already, I already had my mind set on becoming a professional uh, fighter. Mm -hmm. And uh, it just, everything set, everything set really well. It was just timing, right? Um, and, and then my, again, my, my husband, he was very involved in that before. He's been very involved in my, in my career at the time too. And he, and we've had a conversation and we're like, maybe this is a sign that you are not 
ready to hang up the boots and you're ready to become somebody bigger than just a referee. That's that's amazing. And and while I'm I'm sure you'd be a wonderfully fair referee, uh, you won't be the Thunder Rosa that we all know and love. Um, let's move on to a little bit about um, Pro Re- Mission Pro Wrestling, which aims to give women a platform. Tell me about the creation and the aims of the company and, and how is it managing that along with all of your other projects? Do you actually sleep at all or? Well, before this, no, I was not sleeping. I was having like three hours of sleep sometimes because I was traveling a lot. So it was it was very difficult. I'm not going to lie. It's very difficult to run a, a wrestling show. Um, I had, I, like I said, I have a really strong group of women and men that are a part of my team. And we all like help each other, right? Uh, the first two, one, the first year and a half, like it was me and a friend. We were running a lot of the stuff, like the, the everything clerical mm. business like everything and um and it just took off man like uh during the pandemic we were like one of the very few shows that run and it was the with the premise of again just giving a platform to women that otherwise didn't have it or that they're not as popular or like um that they haven't had a chance to like really thrive and, and really do something in, in a place and where they feel safe uh at the moment when we created mission pro wrestling uh there was a group of us who share our, our, our stories when uh, we we were, um, you know, the speak out movement, but we shared the stories within ourselves because we didn't feel comfortable sharing them live. And really? um, yes, yes. So we talk about certain people that came out and we were like, did that happen to you? Yeah, it happened to me too. What about this guy? Yeah, dude, this is, what, it, it was a lot of that. And I was like, why are we not running our, the things ourselves? You know, why are we just, you know, letting men decide what we can do and how we wrestle and how we should look and how, how, how we, we do something like this. So the first show, like, I remember saying that, that that, like, we are like, you know, kind of like challenging the establishment a little bit in terms of like, when when is the last time that women were able to run something like this? And it feels so like community-based. Right. And, um, and believe me, like um, I had a meeting yesterday and we were just talking about how special some of the moments that we have had in the last, for years, we have our anniversary show in September 17th and how special it has been like to see a lot of these women that came to our show one or two times and then they got signed in different places. And then now they're like champions. They're like traveling all over the world. They have worked in so many different places in like and remember like me reaching out personally to them because I remember them sharing their experience that nobody will give them a chance. And, mm. and it's just beautiful to see them grow and, and to see them like I still in contact with some of them and, and, and just like how grateful they are in, in, you know, in the background. Like we I didn't post it on social media because it didn't need to be posted like those, some of those stuff it doesn't need to be posted for me to see them succeed that way. And for yeah. me to see them on TV and see them in posters. That's what we were trying to do with Mission Pro Wrestling is like to give them that that to feel confident about their abilities to feel confident about being a woman of color to feel confident about being a, the women that they are and not feel judged or not feel like they have to be a certain type of way for them to be successful and it's really sad because in the independent scene sorry i'm talking a lot this is That's all good it really it, it passions me good it's, it's very sad to see in the independent scene that we don't have a lot of all not 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 necessarily all women shows but a showing where they showcase women a lot and and we do now we introduce more of the guys here at the Salvation Army where we are like running in San Antonio. Mm. But but we focus on them, on the women. Like our focus is on the women. And uh, like I said, we have been able to 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 do a lot. Last year we were super busy. We I think we run like 25 shows in different states of the country. And um and and it was it was really tough. And in some days I some weekends I didn't sleep. Uh, mm-hmm. Like the weekend of uh, All Out, I was in three different cities in wow. four days. It wow. was pretty intense, but but I wouldn't change it for anything. No, and, 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 and it's a big deal. Things. It's a big deal as well. It All is. Out especially was a massive deal as well as everything else that you're doing. It's interesting that you talk about um, women's wrestling groups because we work a lot with um, Dan Reed from Pro Wrestling Eve. He, he quite often joins me on the show. And, I love uh, him. We, Oh, Dan's great. And we was um we was actually watching the lights out uh match that you had with Britt Baker uh on the channel live and um and that was a real sort of pinnacle of uh, people talk about like Trish and Lita being the inspiration for a generation of wrestlers and in many ways it was and we both turned to each other at the end of that match. I mean it was my match of the year and, and said like 
that's that's this generation's pinnacle that's the aim and inspiration and it's incredible that you do all of this sort of work in inspiring young people and working with young people and I'm sure that a lot of that is bringing out confidence and stuff like that and yet you've you transitioned from a, a social worker to a wrestler social worker you are kind of this unique um thing at the minute Thunder well I mean I guess I always say like there are certain things that were meant for you that were meant to be in your life that were meant to happen in your life. It was just timing for yeah. me. It was all about timing. It was when I happened to go to a wrestling show in Oakland and I thought it was funny and I thought it would be kind of cool to, to challenge myself in a different way. And I ended up falling in love. It's like, it's like when you meet your, the, the love of your life, right? It's timing. Yeah. You happen to be at, you know, at the, at, at the gym or at the beach, the guy look at you, you look at the girl, you guys lock eyes, and they're like, that's that, that's it. This is it. It yeah. just happened. It's the same with me with professional wrestling. I mm. never wanted to be a wrestler. A lot of my peers, they that's the only thing they talk about. Like when I was little, I watched, you know, X, Y, and Z, and like this is how they make me feel. And I was like, to me, it was like, wow, the, the theatrics, the violence, the 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 fact that you could be a, a character that you know, you can create a character or you can be the real person that you really are in the ring. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that was for me. And like the fact that I have, I always have like a passion for change and a passion for, you know, activism and a passion for, for doing things the right way in certain aspects. And in, in, in the environment that I've been able to work in, um, a lot of people have been able to become a, a support group and, 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 you know, a cheerleading squad and, and everything. And, and again, I have received so much help from so many different people. This is, you know, um, veterans uh, from fans, sponsors. And I am in, in the place that I'm in because a lot of them have come through and then have helped me. They have uplifted me. And um, and it, it is important, right, to, uh, to continue to do that. Yeah, and, and you really do. You sort of, it seems clear that you you pass that on to other people. And you've had a lot of experience, obviously, working all over the world, obviously, where UK based. Um, so tell me a little bit about the UK and wrestling in the UK. I know you worked for Lucha Britannia in a match against Nina Samuels. Uh, do you have any stories from the UK or, or any sort of interesting lessons that you learned from the British, British wrestling style? Well, I wish I would have known better, you know, and I, I probably would have you know, reach out to more people <laughs> when I was there. I feel like um, I spent a lot of time, a lot of time really thinking about, you know, how wrestling can take you to different places. Like in Lucha, in, in wrestling in Lucha Britannia was a really, really good experience because working with, with, with in that environment, how difficult, different it was, it, it yeah. really, like, again, it like, sparked an idea for me to start uh, a promotion in a different way, right? And it, mm -hmm. it, it took me a couple of years to develop it. And um, and they they're definitely they push the envelope in in, in like in gender roles in like uh and the and the way that they present certain things, you know, because like sometimes they have some of the girls with latex and it's just it's very different. It's not like your typical wrestling show. It is Lucha Britannia and, and it's Lucha based and um and and the owner he's just such a magical being like he was so so cool and then greg was another one who i really enjoy working with they taught me a lot like i was going to training as much as possible and, and they were just so welcoming and they were like just like like the soul just like me like very very open and, and i really and really enjoy working there and moving things forward as well because obviously that they they, they they do um and a lot of the british wrestling scene is especially like Lucha Britannia and Pro Wrestling Eve. Um, one of the wrestlers, you're one of the wrestlers who's performed in, in the main event of TV shows, the kickoff show, and every other possible combination on the card. However, you've talked about um, about how how important women's wrestling is. Um, how how does it feel to be a major component of that show? And do you think there's room for more time for female performers on the show? I think there's always time for more, you know, female performance, just because I'm, you know, being a, a little selfish. Um, I mean, I, I think it is important, and I think it is important also how do we portray and how do we develop the stories for people to really like be um, interested in 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 the wrestling part, right? Because sometimes it's not even about the wrestling; it's about the the story that leads into the the wrestling part, and I think that's 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 key. That's very, very key. How you 
how you building it, how you selling it, how you everything. So um, yeah, I think I think that's that's one thing. Um, it, I think this is like everywhere we're we're missing. I'm not saying in one particular place. I think it's everywhere. Mm-hmm. I think we can mm-hmm. do a better job on that. Oh, it's definitely something that people are pushing for on social media as well and, and stuff like that to see more of the, the talents because there are some incredible talents. Um, let's move on a little bit. Let's talk about the Thunder Rosa on YouTube, your YouTube channel, and the fun that you constantly seem to be having, like producing that. How cool is it for you to have a way to reach out to your fans as well as documenting your travels? Um, I don't know, man. I'm just like always... I'm very creative. My mind is always racing. So, and then I have my, my media uh, assistant, uh, Tony Allen, who's always like coming up with the most crazy, craziest ideas. <laughs> and we're just like meshed together. He's the editor. And like with, for example, like Simon Miller, he came to, he came to my life because of my, my, my homeboy was like, Hey dude, you should bring Simon Miller. He's in Dallas. And I was like, having me taco. Okay. Like, Simon Miller. <laughs> I was like, you never seen Simon? I was like, no, I keep telling you a couple of things. Like, yeah, I'll have him. And Simon is super, shout out to Simon Miller. He's the most positive dude ever. Like, he is down to do anything. Like, I took him out. I was like, put a onesie. He put the onesie on. I was like, eat this disgusting candy. He's eating this disgusting candy. And it was just like, he was so appreciative of everything. And like, and the fact that he came to uh, to Texas, right? And like, the, the the welcoming of the people. I don't think he was expecting people to welcome him like that. Because he was talking to me about wrestling in, in the UK and the shows are very small and stuff. And then yeah. he comes here. We almost had like, I think we have like over 450 people. Yeah. Which is a pretty, pretty decent size show for a small venue. Absolutely. And the, the people, he had a, he had a longer line than me. Wow. You know? I mean, <laughs> yeah. he's, 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 he's certainly got his own uh, uh, fans, especially with all the stuff he's doing on YouTube and his, uh, his own gimmicks, which are great. <laughs> Yeah, um, he's, he's a wonderful person, but um, I enjoy doing this because it's another part of, of my, uh, as an artist, my creativity. Mm-hmm. And like in the next couple of months, again, because we have to pivot on a lot of stuff like the taco blog. I can't do live taco blogs with people that I was used to. So I might have to do other stuff. And, and I'm excited because change is good and, and you have to like accept it. Like at, at first it's kind of hard, but you have to accept that change is good yeah absolutely and, and move forward with it as well and uh, like you said sometimes it's nice to just take reflection on everything and, and see where the future is going so that you you i'll finish it up around here because I, I don't want to take any more of your time but you're clearly someone who cares about people whilst you've left your position as a social worker it's incredible to see the level of support you continue to give young performers and the changes to the industry going forward what are your ambitions for the future in wrestling and obviously supporting young people as well um, no, this is a, this is a, a very great question. I wish I could have like a, an answer, like a definitive answer. I think I'm still trying to figure it out to tell you the mm-hmm. truth, but it's, it's something that has to do with, you know, you know, building and, 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 and helping some of these individuals who want to, uh, go and move forward in other places. We're, like I said, we're rebuilding and we are rethinking about how we can do this in mission pro. Cause that's like, but the one thing I can and my team can re- really do this uh, yeah. and we're, we're still trying to figure it out. Yeah. And and I, I think that's absolutely valid as well. Sometimes we don't have all the answers and what, what might have been the answer last week is completely different to this week as well. Yes, that you're absolutely right. Yeah. Do you have um, anything to plug before you go? Yes, actually on September 17th, that is our anniversary show for mission for wrestling. Mm-hmm. So we will be uh, having a, amazing matches i will be there um you know being doing production because i can't wrestle so i can be behind just behind the scenes um and then uh don't forget guys this sunday we have all out i won't be able to be there but i will be there in spirit supporting my entire team out there in chicago i'm actually pretty sad i'm not in chicago it's one of my favorite cities anything that you've got your your vlogs obviously you, i mean you don't sleep there's there's more to plug than that you're writing a book as well did you mention earlier um i actually have a uh a comic book uh three three series comic book that i will be actually pushing it a little bit more this year or at the beginning of the year um i wow. do i am writing a book i am writing uh also a children's book probably um yeah there's a bunch of stuff that i'm working on uh, that are not related to necessarily wrestling. 
Um, I'm, I, lately, I've been very creative and in very, very different aspects. And it's just like absorbing everything, reading a lot of books and, and really like nourishing my mind. Uh, I think I, that's one of the aspects that I've been missing because, uh, you know, we're so busy in the road. And, um, and like, again, as a UC scholar, um, it's calling, it's calling me. Um, uh, it's like, I, I'm just trying to do more of that. But, uh, but yeah, with YouTube, you, you can sign up for my YouTube guys for the notifications. I have uh, my, my brand army page, which I put nothing but uh, content that you cannot see on social media. Um, and then we have uh, our club for YouTube. If you want to get like exclusive content too, or see our stuff hours before we have it there, you can like chat with, with me and other people. Um, I'm working on other stuff right now. I don't, I don't know yet. I, I when is it going to come out, but, uh, but definitely if you, if you see me singing pretty soon, don't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're doing absolutely everything. Um, and it'd be great to talk to you in the future about some of them projects as well, for sure. Uh, and dive into them a little bit. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Thank you so much.